Hey everyone, it's Devin from the Maniology team with a weekly live every Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. You can find us here on another nail stamping journey. Whether it's tutorial, technique, or hack, we're here to discuss the details and we're so happy you could join us. Also, if you are digging our live streams and you enjoy being a part of our little nail community, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're all about creativity, stamping realness, and awesome nail art. So make sure to hit that subscribe button so that way we can continue hanging out every Tuesday and so you'll get notified every single time we upload a new video. Drop your comments, or sorry, drop your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to chat with you. Hey everybody, today we are going to be talking about something so popular. I literally see it almost every single time we do a live, and that is double stamping, aka double process stamping. I know a lot of us don't necessarily use the term double process stamping, but I know many of you do know what double stamping is. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a manicure inspired by Miss Beyonce herself. Uh, she wore a super cute manicure to the Grammys. I think she was also kind of releasing like her Texas Hold'em song. And this design that we're going to do today is inspired by that. And we're going to be doing a lot of double stamping. So I'm really excited to show you all. And also everyone say hi to Tiana. She's here with us today on the live helping out. So let's get right into it. Can you guys hear me by the way? For some reason, it looks like YouTube got updated. All the comments that I'd usually see on the side are like gone. So I'm not exactly sure what's up with that. Let me just double check real quick. Hmm. Oh yeah, I don't know where all the comments went. Usually I can see everything, strange. Okay, give me one second, everybody. By the way, we're gonna be using these awesome plates. So in the photo of the thumbnail for this video, you saw these two, M391 and M403, but there are many others that we'll be using. Okay, I think I might have to grab my computer just so that way I can keep an eye on the comments because right now I can't see anything. Okay, everyone, for some reason, I think YouTube might have done another update because it seems like we have some weird little things going on right now. But I know I can't read your comments right now, but make sure that later you guys drop a comment and share your thoughts. And right now we're just going to jump right into the video. Okay, so... Do you guys know about double process stamping? Because I can't wait to rock your world if you don't. So it is very, very easy. It's a high impact design or it's a high impact technique with very, very little effort. You just have to move quickly. So we're gonna be using two colors right now and it's gonna be Anato Clay B196 and also Coconut B268. Most of you know we love using the color coconut. It is always around and always near us we've used it in countless videos so when you do double process stamping or double stamping one thing that you need to be aware of is making sure that the design that you want to see on top is present so i'll show you guys what i mean i guess the best way to do it is just to show you and explain after So this is our first design. Now I want the French to have this cute 
cow print. And if you guys haven't seen plate M403 Cloudscape French, it is so adorable. I love this plate. I highly recommend you check it out. Eventually, we're going to do a video comparing all the different French plates so that way you guys can see the differences because there are differences even if they look similar. I promise you they are not. And look at that. Isn't that cool? So basically what we just did, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to move first and then I'll talk after. Whoop. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I think that looks pretty good. So make sure you get some of the bits off before you stamp. I kind of moved quickly. So this is the first design. So let's talk about this before I start jumping in and doing more. That way you guys kind of understand. Um, we're basically layering designs. And the concept is that you layer the print that you want and then you take a solid etch design like this that has no pattern on it and then you stamp it. So you kind of have to think backwards when you do this. You have to think about what you want to see on top and then stamp your base underneath. And the reason why this technique works is because the polish, the polish on this might be dry, but since we're stamping this, now the polish underneath, the base is wet, so it automatically sticks to whatever was on top of it. And then that's how you get this super cute, like, cow pattern French. So that is the first design. And I'm gonna do this a couple more times so you guys get to see what it looks like, but I'm gonna start with the easier nails and then we'll go in and attack the more, not difficult, because honestly this technique isn't difficult and I'm really questioning how long this live is gonna last considering how simple this look is and how simple this manicure is. But this technique is so much fun and I've done it on other lives as well, but I wanted to revisit this because we always, always get questions about this, like literally all the time. So I figured it'd be perfect for us to revisit the topic again. Okay, so this is the design we want to do first, and then we're going to go in with our solid edge. Let me kind of explain why certain designs are better than others and I'll show you after a demonstration after we do the art I'm going to show you why this design works well and why maybe other designs aren't as good for this technique when you're doing any type of double stamping you want to make sure two things are or like there are two certain things that you want to look for when you do double process stamping the first thing is a design that is pretty dense. So this design, for example, is really dense and has a lot of pattern. The second design you want to look for is a design that has no pattern or very little pattern. So that way you can easily pick up your other design. Okay, so whoop, I almost dropped my nail. And if you're wondering why am I taking so long for this, it's because now I can. Let me show you. So now we're gonna just go here and pick up this design. Make sure when you're working with any French plate, you scrape in a horizontal, well, I don't know how to explain. Is this like horizontal, vertical? I wanna say it is horizontally because vertically to me is straight up and down and we're not scraping vertically. Okay, there, I cleaned up all the bits and now we're gonna stamp it onto the nail tip. So, just like that. And then I'm going to put that here. If you end up with like weird little bits like this, you might be able to just scrape it off. 
but that'll only work if your base is fully dry. And for those of you who are wondering about what base I'm using, I did one sponged coat of Skin Deep. And just so that the tips that I was using didn't look clear. And then now we're gonna go ahead and do the next design. Since I'm gonna be using this, I'm gonna clean it off. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I almost forgot. <laughs> so that's the importance of <laughs> You always have to kind of make sure you don't go on autopilot like me. For a second, I almost went on autopilot and <laughs> completely forgot. I mean, that still would have worked because you're going to see in a little bit. That still would have been fine, but I want to stay consistent right now. Okay, so now we're going to do this technique again. And we're going to use our brown... Pick it up and then move the plate, grab your next design, and let me use this. Put lots of polish whenever you work with a French plate or any plate that has a lot of solid etched area like this. Go ahead and use a lot of polish. Do not skimp out. It's better to cover the entire design. There's less likely that you'll have issues. And then you're going to scrape in a horizontal way, just like how I did. And then, bam, picked up all the good stuff. Now we're going to remove any junk that we have here with the back of our scraper, just like that. I have few more little weird bits and pieces so I'm going to use part of my sticky stamper station paper to just pick up any other junk stuff and then I'm going to grab my tip right here and stamp and now we have a cute Cow print French. Now for the other nails, we're just gonna do a solid cream French and then I'm gonna show you another way you can do double stamping. So let's clean off the plate. And I'm gonna use these two First, I'm gonna use this one. So again, always cover a solid etch design like this, the entire thing with polish. Do not hold back. It will make your life easier. Okay, pick up the design. Oh, I have a little gap. That might be okay. I'll show you why in a sec. So now I'm gonna stamp the nail tip. Just like that. Since I have a little gap, I have extra polish here. I'm just going to take that and cover the gap like that. And if you have a gap here like this at the top, you can go ahead and either paint it or you can restamp it. I think I'm going to restamp it and it should look perfectly fine. So. I'm just going to go ahead and actually go up one size since I don't want to have to clean that design again. Perfect. So now I'm just going to go over that design from earlier. Oh. 
Did I catch the tip? I think I did. Oh, wait. Maybe I didn't this time. Perfect. Now I did. So now we have our cream French base. So I'm going to repeat this step. And then I'm going to show you another trick for double stopping. For those of you wondering why don't I want to use these designs up here because the line is thinner you can see it's not as wide and I want a wider line for my French but if you have shorter nails then the thinner ones will work better for you since I can't see any of the comments right now Tiana can you um message me any comments that i might need to answer since i have my computer right next to me i'm able to kind of take a peek also fun fact which i am going to share like show you guys when i eventually do the french stamping live if you kind of play with the stamper, so for example, if I push down and then kind of drag the stamper down, it can drag the, the curve down farther as well. So I will show you that trick a little later when we do our French live because there are so many fun things with the French plates that I think you guys should experience and try, but that is just one little tip that I can share now. Okay, so now we're gonna use plate M277 and the very, very loved and very famous BMXL476. So we're gonna use these two plates and I'm gonna show you another way that you can do a little bit of the double stamping. Okay, so we are going to need black B171 and we're going to use turquoise B324 although you can use whatever blue color you want and do you guys know where this is going also have you guys seen that manicure that Beyonce was wearing to the Grammys it is so flippin cute <laughs> um, so I am just going to go ahead and apply some black polish to my design then I like to use a monocle stamper anytime I do French designs or even for the double stamping monocle or the ice cube just because the area of it is bigger so it makes it easier now I'm going to go ahead and select this oval design And I'm going to use the turquoise color. Check that out. Isn't that cool? Okay. So now I just made a really cute turquoise stone. And... I'm gonna stamp it actually. I'm gonna stamp it on this one. There we go. So Beyonce had this beautiful white French. She did like a like a bam white color. I liked the cream color look instead. And then she had all these like gorgeous large turquoise stones at the tip of her French like this. So that's kind of the inspiration. And I believe she's coming out with a new country album. So I thought we'd kind of tap into that and do a little bit more of this cute kind of cow French. 
I know black and white are very popular for cow print, but I personally like cream and brown because it reminds me of like real cows. <laughs> I mean, not that they're not, you know, black and white, there are black and white print cows, but I don't know the type of cow it's called. I'm sure some of you might know, um, but I like that type of cow, whatever that cow is that has spots more like this. Okay, so let's do that trick one more time and I'm gonna use this design. So this plate is great for double stamping because all of these patterns are pretty tight knit. So it makes it very, very easy. I think I'm gonna use this design this time. Then I'm just gonna apply black. Scrape. And then we're gonna go back to this plate. We're gonna grab another design. I think I wanna go with this shape. I think it's called Marquise. and apply my teal polish. Pick up. So, did you notice when I've done all this reverse, um, sorry, all this double stamping, all the black bits, <clears throat> end up getting stuck to the plate. Only the wet polish picks up the design because it's basically like glue almost. Then we're gonna go ahead and stamp this right there. And then that is our manicure. So this was a very, very simple and easy technique. I'm positive all of you can nail this very easily it is not difficult at all now let's get into the nitty-gritty and science of why some of these designs are better suited and others maybe aren't so let me grab a plate okay so i'm going to use plate m377 this shark plate as a good example of certain designs that are better suited versus others. Okay, let's use our cloud French and then I'm gonna try and, yeah, I think that'll be best. So, again, this is just examples this isn't going to be on an actual nail oh oh guys <laughs> oh, my mind is racing how many of you caught that before i even realized okay so let's try this again and this time i'm going to use brown so this design that we're using is pretty spaced apart the lines aren't tightly together they're oh oh gosh <laughs> i need to get it together <laughs> um the lines aren't tightly together like this plate so let's take a look a quick comparison you can see here there's not much space in between each of these designs. Look at this. Look at how much space there is in between each of these little shark teeth. Now we're going to go over with our French plate. And you will see why this maybe isn't the best combination. Again, always cover solid etched areas completely with polish. Don't take the chance. Do 
do you see why this maybe isn't the best choice for a design? Because the pattern is pretty spaced apart, you don't have as much control of how much of that first pattern you're gonna get on the solid etched. So if I had been more careful with my placement, I probably could have gotten that full tooth, but even with that, there's still gonna be parts of the design that are just cut off and look weird, like here, like the top, even the sides. Even if I could have gotten this one completely on it, the rest of the design still would have been kind of weird. Um, and if you like that look, that's completely up to you. Again, this is your creative journey. It is whatever you want to do. But personally, when I am trying to select designs that I want to use for double stamping, I always look for what uh, the term in graphic design is like seamless. So seamless patterns like this. Dense, full, seamless patterns do much better. Let me show you what happens when we do double stamping with two patterned designs and why I don't necessarily recommend it. So I'm gonna, let me clean this up and then I'm gonna keep it on the sticky stamper station so that way we compare everything at the end. Oh, someone said the brown and white cows are called Jersey cows. Thank you for sharing that. I learned something new today. Okay, so this is the design that maybe I don't recommend, this type of spaced out pattern. Let me show you what happens when we do pattern over pattern. So for this, I'm going to go with... Hmm... What is something that's a little bit more realistic? Oh, I know. We're gonna use plate M323. So we're gonna go with one of these wavy designs and this is a pattern. Even though there is a lot of solid etched space, I'm gonna show you why selecting your patterns are gonna be really important. And then now we're gonna go ahead with our plate M5, uh, M391, and we're going to choose the more traditional cow pattern. So first, let me go ahead and apply this. Oh, whoops, that got a little weird, but we still have something to work with over here, so that's fine. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab this teal pattern or this design here and I'm going to use that teal polish again. So this is an example of my base layer, so the solid etched layer, being maybe a little too patterned. This actually doesn't look as bad as I thought it would, but this also, when I look at this design, here, let me stamp this. It's gonna be hard to tell that the idea behind this was maybe a cow print. Even if I changed it to black and white, I still don't know if cow print is what you would instantly read just because there's so much space in between each of these little solid etch lines that I don't know if that comes across the way that you would want it to. So that's part of the reason why when we say pick solid etch base layer, like the, the cloud French here, and then choosing a tight knit pattern like this will guarantee the best results. So if you want to see here, I'm going to do one more. This time we're going to do a turquoise nail that is a really cute French pattern. So let's try. 
again. So now I'm going to select, hmm, I think I'll select this part of the design. And then we're gonna use black. Okay, now let's go back with our French plate. How do I want it? I think I'm going to turn it this way. Also notice how I turn my plate different angles depending what it is I'm trying to get. So again, because I don't want to scrape, I don't want to scrape down like this because that's going to dig out the polish here. I want to scrape this way. I turned my plate in a way that made it easier for myself to do that. I have a little gap, that was my fault, but I think the point is still very clear. Okay, now let's compare. Take a look. You can see why using a denser pattern or a seamless pattern like the one that I showed you here works better than possibly this pattern here where things are more spaced out. So there are so many ways that you can utilize this. I think if we... Okay, I'm going to show you... On this plate, this design didn't work the way that we wanted it to, but maybe if we chose a design like here, it would have been better. So let's try again with a pattern that has a little less space in between each of the solid etched areas. And the lines here are thicker. So I think we could have much better success. So I'm going to do, hmm, let me try, oh, I know, oh, this will be a perfect one. Everybody loves swirls. So let's try the swirl plate. Yeah, let's try the swirl plate. I think this would be a good example and I think I think this should work the way that I was imagining so let's do the swirls first and I'm gonna go for maybe these ones actually maybe this one instead this one's a little bit spaced apart but I think we can still make it work Let me clear this off. I want to see that real quick. Oh, actually, I like this one the best. Okay, we're going to go with this one. So, clear that. Then we're going to stamp. Let's see if this works the way that we want it to. If you're struggling with solid etch designs, make sure to check out our live specifically talking about that. Because we have a live talking about how to properly scrape. Well, hold on, let me remove some of this excess so that way we have a nice 
area so that way you can compare everything. So that was actually a lot better. And I think part of the reason this works better is because look at how thin these lines are here. So if I used this design, I think I would have had to try some perhaps more dense. And then because these lines here were nice and thick, it was easier to pick up more of that pattern. So even though this pattern, this black pattern that we have on top was a little bit more spaced apart, it still works because the base design underneath, the solid edge design was wider. See how on this skinny line, it doesn't look that great because obviously we can't get as much of this black pattern. So I'm gonna try this design one more time, but this time I'm gonna look for a design that is even tighter more tightly knit. So let's try with, hmm. I have so many plates near me. I'm trying to find which one would be the best candidate. Let's see. Oh, this could be a fun one to experiment with. Okay, for those of you who have like that issue with tiny holes, um, I think it's called like tryptophobia, I wanna say. Look away. <laughs> this has a lot of tiny little cells. Um, so this pattern on plate M404 is really dense. And I think this would work better with this design. So let's try again using our black polish. And we're gonna pick this design up clean off the stamper. And then I'm gonna go back and pick up my next design. So, okay, we're gonna try this design again and see if using a tighter pattern is going to make it easier to get the right effect. Why did I do that? Okay, so I'm happy I kind of did do it because now you guys can see. You see how polish got pulled out from the bottom? It's because I did a vertical scrape. Had I turned the plate this way and did a horizontal scrape, it would have made my life easier. Well, I guess it's still a vertical scrape technically if the plate is turned, but in the same direction as the pattern makes my life a lot simpler. Where am I today? <laughs> I'm all over. Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna clean off this design. So for those of you who are like, hey, what about this design? Did it dry up? It doesn't matter if it dries because this polish underneath is gonna make that, this polish stick. Okay, so cover the design. Turn the plate and scrape. Okay. Yes, the effect is much better. Now, like I said, I did kind of move slowly with this one. And I think that's part of the reason why that black stuff didn't transfer. But it's okay because I can just pull it off like this. 
So for those of you who are wondering what am I using, I'm just using um, a, a sheet from my sticky stamper station. And I think I even have a, oh, whoops, a dotting tool to get in between. Oh, well, whoops, not perfect, but it's okay. This is just for demonstration purposes. So this is the design. I'm gonna stamp it right here so that way we can compare. Now, look at how much better this design looks than this design. Because the pattern was um, tight enough, so when I decided to do my double stamping, I could still get the full effect of where did I even put that plate? Oh my goodness. Oh, here. I could still get the full effect of this pattern over this versus using this original cowl pattern, which would be fine if I did a larger solid edge space. So if I did this and this, that's perfectly fine because this is completely open so I will get the full effect of that cow print. But because this pattern, the lines are so thin, I needed something that has even less space in between it. So that way I could get the same type of effect as the original black pattern. Does that make sense? I know it's, <laughs> I, it's hard for me to explain this but i'm trying my best um so i hope you guys understand what i'm saying <laughs> so i'm going to show you another plate that i think tiana used recently so this was m466 this plate is not ideal for most double stamping can you all guess why Part of the reason is because so many of these designs are really large. So for example, this little stuff here, it's all tiny and that's fine. But for example, like the little porcupines, I think that's what they are, or hedgehogs, um, these probably won't look so nice. Same with this. All these tiny flowers here, that's okay. But this large flower, it's going to look a little rough when you are doing double stamping. And let me show you, even with this, this would be really rough. A lot of the designs on here are not ideal for double stamping. It looks like it could work because everything is, you know, pretty close together. But the size of the actual pattern or like size of elements in the actual pattern are really large. And so I wouldn't recommend it. But let me show you because I think that'll be easier. So let's try... I think we're going to try with this again because obviously if I use a smaller design like this or I use something like this, that's definitely not going to look good. Especially when you consider that like, okay, for example, the little hedgehog. Look at how big this little hedgehog is and look at how thin these lines are. That hedgehog is going to get cut up in all sorts of weird ways. You're going to have bits and pieces of a hedgehog. <laughs> and I don't think that's the look you want. So... This is probably more ideal, but even with this, I question whether it'll look good. So let's try with the hedgehog, and I'm even going to try with the flower, because this pattern looks like it could work, but I don't think it will. The bees might work, so we can try all three and compare. Okay, so stamp with black first. And since I don't need to cover the entire design, since we're just doing French, I'm not going to. So pick up black first. Now let's go ahead and do eight. And I'm going to use this. So turn your plate to the side. It'll make it easier for you to pick up your French. And let's see if I can 
Okay, maybe... All right, I'm going to try. I'm going to try get our little hedgehog friends in there. So this one worked. This one did work. Now your nail or wherever you do your French has to be this wide. So that was a pleasant surprise. But if I used, if your nail beds are short and you don't want to do like a super thick French, then if I tried to do it, look at there's no way those little hedgehogs would have worked. You would have got like hedgehog eyes, maybe some ears, and that could be a cute look if you want. But again, it's a little bit trickier when you start playing around with these types of designs because you really have to think about what it's gonna look like after. Luckily, you have the clear stamper so it makes your life easier. Let me just clean off all of this stuff. So you can check before you go ahead and stamp. But if you are just starting out with double stamping, I highly recommend choosing patterns that are a little bit simpler. So there we go. And then the other thing too is, okay, if your nail isn't this wide, for example, with my nail, if I did this French, look at that. The little hedgehogs would have been cut off. I would have only gotten this, like this to maybe this. <laughs> Not as ideal versus if I come up here and I do this to this, you're still going to get the same effect, even with this pattern too. If I go from here to here, because that's the width of the tip for my French, not exactly sure what that's going to look like. Um, yeah, people might have to, or you might have to like help people if they look at your nails and ask you, oh, what is that pattern? That might be a little harder to read versus this. This will be a lot easier to read. People will instantly know, oh, hey, that's turquoise. Now, I, I kind of want to try this. I don't know if I've ever actually tried this. I might do just a very, very tiny bit of reverse stamping. And I'm going to do it with this design because I think this will be easier. And we will see because I don't know if I've actually done reverse double stamping. I'm trying to think if I have and I can't ever have like... I don't remember an incidence where I actually did do that. So let's give it a whirl. I'm just gonna do something very simple. I'm not gonna get crazy with the colors. And we're gonna find out right now if double stamping works for this technique. I don't, I really question though. Um, oh, Tiana has a yellow here for me. Perfect. Thanks, Tiana. <laughs> She's not here, but um, we share the same nail desk, so it worked out perfectly. It's like she left the polishes out for me because she knew I was going to end up doing a little reverse stamping with bees. So I'm just going to paint some of these. I don't know if I'm going to do all of them because I want this to be fast since this is not the main focus of today's live. The main focus is finding out what designs double stamp and which designs do not. So we're going to have to give that all just a sec to dry, and we will see if this works with double stamping. I also want to 
make the playing fields even harder. And what if, instead of just doing a solid color for this, what if we did like a multicolor base? Will that affect it? How's that gonna look? Let's find out together. So I'm gonna use this design again because it has the widest amount of space. I think it's a little easier. I feel like if I tried to use this, oh here, this is perfect. So I'm not gonna stop this yet. But you can already see, with the thinnest line here, this top line, there's no way you're gonna get much of those bee details. Maybe, maybe you might get one little bee, but you have to hope the trinelle is this wide. If it's not that wide, you're still probably not gonna get much. Versus if we choose a design like, or the wider French here, you can get a lot more. And even then, it's still gonna be a little bit of a stretch. But here you can see there is possibility to maybe at least get like two or three bees. Okay, do we think that this dried? I think so. I hope so. I think so. <laughs> I think I am gonna take a chance. So let me fold this because I need to clean this off. Now I'm going to go in with, I'm going to get adventurous. We're going to use two colors. Do I want to use a third? Yes, we're going to use three colors and let's see what happens. This is either going to go super well and I'm gonna be shocked and we're all gonna learn something new right now. <laughs> or this is gonna be lemon lemon difficult and it's just gonna <laughs> crash and burn. So stay tuned to find out. Okay. So yes, is there a lot of polish? Is there way too much polish on the plate? Probably. It's okay, we have an abundance of polish. <laughs> have a whole warehouse of polish, so. Don't worry. Oh, no way. What? <laughs> Yay, everybody. Okay, so look at this. Not perfect, but let's try and clean this off. I don't know if I've ever, I don't think I've ever done this before where I did a reverse stamp. Uh oh, oh. Okay. Ooh, things are getting a little, a little difficult here. It is doable. Oh man, we are swimming in uncharted territories right now. I cannot believe that. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I wish you guys were here with me in the comments. I wish we could talk about how excited we are for all of this. Well, I got the sticky stamp station all over me. Okay. Oh my goodness, we did it. We did it! <laughs> Look at that! Isn't it amazing? I just need a second. This is groundbreaking. <laughs> I feel like, you know, Tiana and I have been stamping for so long that when we stumble upon a new stamping technique, it feels like a really big deal because it's, I mean, I've been working with maniology for 10 years and I've been in nail tech for like over 10 years. So this was gonna be the highlight of the month. <laughs> stamping accomplishment of the month, possibly of the year, we will see. That, that was impressive. Okay, so moving on to another design. And I think I was trying to show you all. Oh yeah, if we try some of these other designs, I don't know if it's really gonna work. Like these are all really big. 
So I kind of don't think any of them would work. I wanted to show you this design, I think, but you can already see. Look at the size of the flower. And that's something else you can do. You can literally hold the designs up next to each other and you can tell whether this solid edge area is going to work with something like this. So already, like the size of the flower is pretty big. So I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to get the full design. Although I think that because everyone knows what a flower looks like, the power of suggestion is really strong with this design, so I think it could be easy. So let's try. And this time I'm gonna do another multicolor because I don't know why I've never thought about doing multicolor <laughs> for it, for this technique. It makes so much sense. So maybe this, this might be okay. But this shape, like birds or the fox, I question. The power of suggestion, like, Yes, people know what foxes look like, but this is just the head, and I just question whether that would look a little different looking <laughs> or, like, cut off. So we'll try it together, and we'll find out. Okay, first things first. Stamp your black design. Certain things, there's wiggle room. So it's hard for me to give you really strong set rules because again there is certain areas where it's like hey maybe that actually does work um so if you are new to stamping i would say and you're new to this technique it makes it easier to go for the patterns that are like this these more solid details and also more abstract things are a lot easier once you become more advanced with the double stamping you can try different things and kind of push the limits so this time Let's do blue and, or what, blue, pink and purple. I ate lunch today, so I don't know why I'm just so delirious. I think I just, yeah, I have so much going on. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, so this looks pretty good. Also, when you're working with this technique, make sure to, if you can, line it up in a way that is more favorable for the design. So for example, I don't know if you guys caught that, it was really quick when I did it, but I, the black design that was on the stamper, I kind of moved my stamper down so that way I could get part of that flower. So here we go. But now let's pretend that this is on like on a real nail and it's this small. Oh, here, it's kind of hard because I have a shadow on my nail. So let's try with maybe something like this. So let's say that this is, it's this small. I think people's ability to instantly recognize flower shapes would still see that this is a flower, but again, now you're really relying on the power of suggestion in order for people to instantly grab the concept. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can totally do that. But if you're looking for something that is recognizable immediately, you're probably going to want to go with designs that are more like this. Because once you start playing around with particular patterns that aren't so abstract and aren't as tightly knit, you kind of have to hope <laughs> that people get it. Especially if your nail is small, like this. I mean, if your nail is wide, then you're fine. But for those of us who have really little nails, or even when you are selecting patterns, you just have to kind of be aware of that. I think, oh, I could even show you with this design too. Or, hmm. Let's do, I'm going to do maybe one more and then we're going to wrap it up. Oh, I, sorry everyone. I was reading Tiana's comments. I'm happy you guys are super excited. I was very excited with that too. Um, finding out like the, this, the reverse stamping plus the color like combination thing. It's, it's so so exciting. 
It's amazing. Amazing discoveries. Okay, let's try one more and I am going to use... I mean, I think we already know that the fox faces aren't going to work, don't we? I'm pretty sure we already know this isn't going to work as well because it's so big. Unless you had like a really big design like... Oh, hold on everyone. Give me a sec. I think I saw something over here. Okay. So, by the way, this plate M285 is going to be great for abstract styles of double stamping. And I thought I saw... thought I saw a plate that I think would be really good for this. Maybe I was imagining it. Oh, oh, yay. Okay, cool. So this is the original classic, French classic, classic French, classic. Hmm. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. Plate M052, literally one of our most famous plates ever. And also for those of you wondering, how is it different? Look at the shape of this French, look at the shape of this French. We have one set here, but honestly, we needed like a whole set. So for those of you who like more curved French, this is the one. Um, we're gonna use this to, so that way you guys can see what it looks like when we do larger patterns. And yeah. I wonder if we stamped this if we stamped this and then we stamped this, or wait, is that how that would work? Wait, one, two, yes. Let's, let's try another advanced level of reverse stamping. This is only gonna partially work, so we're not gonna be able to get the stars. I already know that's gonna be an issue, but let's see. How many times can we reverse stamp? or double stamp before it becomes too much. Okay, so now we have stamp one. Let's do stamp two. So this layer. I'm gonna do pink. Okay, I'm gonna have to line this up. Okay, we lined that up. Oh, we kind of got some missing. So now let's try this. Oh man, <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie, I'm scared. <laughs> this is, I feel like we're really pushing it with this. Okay, so one more, one more stamp. So this is a triple stamp. This isn't a double stamp, this is a triple. So now I'm gonna just add colors all over. <clears throat> it's stressing me out so much, my voice is starting to crack. <laughs> um, and then we're gonna scrape. Oh, man, things get messy so quickly. Ooh. My hands, my nails, everything. Okay. <gasps> ah. Okay, not perfect, but, but look at these other ones. We're not gonna focus on this, the part that didn't work. We're gonna focus on the part that did work. <laughs> this is essentially a whole manicure in one stamp. Three stamps got me a whole manicure. Imagine not having to paint your base. Okay, wait, I need a nail tip just so that way I can stop this on a nail tip because I'm just like tripping out how well that actually did work. I have a nail tip right here. Okay, get this off. <laughs> we are making nail stamping history right now together, everybody. 
And it's funny that we're doing this together. This is the first time I can't see everyone like talking. So I just gotta feel these moments all by myself. Uh-uh, no way. <gasps> That's a whole manicure. That's a whole manicure. <laughs> I mean, this isn't perfect, but like, you know, I don't know, maybe we could like fix it. Okay, wait. Oh, okay, hold on. That's gonna be, if I try to fix it this way, I'm gonna be very sad. So let me take the paint parts away. I mean, is Oops. Okay, whatever. I mean, I guess I could. There. We're gonna make it intentional if we're gonna do that then. Uh, no, 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 no. That's good enough. But what? It was a whole manicure in three stamps. Okay, so that's something new. <laughs> um, wait, let me show you. Okay, so there was a bunch of stars on this design that didn't transfer, that got stuck here. So just be aware of that. But this technique definitely worked. I could have just used this design. That would have made sense too. Oh, that would have made so much sense. Dang it. It's all right. It's all right. That's not the point. The point is, three stamps got us this, a whole manicure. You don't even have to paint the base. You could literally just stamp it on. I mean, we've discussed stamping on the base before. That's not something new. But to get the design in different colors, so you don't have to reverse stamp. I just reverse stamped. I took away the reverse stamping and the painting process just now and just stamped all three. Oh, I have no words. <laughs> I am speechless. I mean, that really summed it up. That's probably the highlight. I don't think it's going to get better than that, guys. I really don't. I think, I think that's the end of the live. I think that pretty much concludes everything I had to say because I just don't know how it could get any better. Truly. So, I mean, this is the manicure we started out with. This was all right, but this is where we ended up. And let me tell you, where we ended up was amazing. And for those of you who didn't see the entire live, it's okay. You can always rewind and we will be uploading this live after it's done. So you can rewatch the whole thing all over again and you can see nail stamping history happen. I mean, this is honestly the coolest thing I've ever seen in a very long time. I've seen a lot of nail stuff, lots and lots and lots of nail stuff. I see, I'm always watching nail content, like 24 seven. I do it for my job and then I go home and I get on my phone to decompress and then I stare at more nail content. So I'm literally seeing nail stuff all the time. I have never seen this. I have never, or this. These two, I have never seen happen. And I don't know why. Um, I feel like if we did the reverse stamping, like if you actually do it, it might be hard to do it with a design that is super duper filled and opaque. So for example, wait, that wouldn't even make sense. Why would you do it that way? Anyways, yeah, I think the design has to have only a little bit of reverse stamping like this. I think that was part of the reason why this was successful. I don't know if it was like a whole reverse stamp, like 
filled with everything and then you go and do it, that might just be tricky. You might just be pushing it. But who knows? I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, try it out. Upload it to our Maniology Facebook community. If you're not a part of it, go check it out. There's a wonderful supportive group of people who love talking about all things nails just like us. And make sure you at mention if you try this technique and you are able to do like a super intense reverse stamping session and then try that. I'm very curious. Or you could just do this all day long because honestly, I, this is great. <laughs> this, is, this is awesome. So yeah, I Tiana, are there any questions? Do we miss anything? Is there anything that I need to circle back on? I am going to check. Give me one sec, everyone. Oh, yay. <laughs> Tiana. <laughs> Tiana said, hooray, good job. They love this S. I can't see. <laughs> For those of you who are like, do you guys swear? We swear. We just, we, but we can't on, we can't do it on YouTube. That's not right. We got, we got kids who might be watching this stuff. <laughs> so anyways, thank you so much, everyone. I think we're good. Tiana says, seems like all the questions were answered. I'm so bummed that I wasn't able to kind of see everyone's comments because I wish I could have, we could have celebrated together. But I just have to know that you guys are celebrating where you're at with me. And make sure you guys type in the comments once this video is uploaded, share any feedback, share any ideas, share your excitement and joy with me if you want to. And we will talk to you guys. Okay. Bye everyone. Have a good day. Talk to you later.